Hello, beautiful ones. This is Livia Devi, and welcome to our beautiful event, Lionsgate Return to uh, Your Original Blueprint. Thank you, Livia. Thank you. And like my brother said, it is a time for harvesting all the seeds that we have planted in the past years. And sometimes we forget. You know, sometimes we really forget those, what those seeds. But today for Lionsgate is a reminder for us to, to join together in celebration. And this event, the one that we are all being a part of, it's a time for one simple intention, which is that harvesting moment where we choose consciously to pick up all the fruits, all the blessings that we've been working so hard on. And sometimes we just put aside and, and pretend they are not there. But no, they're there. It's a time for, for dreaming big, for uh, setting yourself into starting a new business, a new career, buying a new home, whatever you want to manifest new during this moment, starting a new relationship, start uh, traveling. It makes no difference. You can, you can dream big, you can think big. And this energy for, uh, of Lion's Gate will support whatever your intention is. So that's why it's important to, to forget about the limitations that you have had, that we have had in the past, because during this um, period from July, uh, what is it, 28th through August 12th, it doesn't apply. It almost actually doesn't apply. It's, it's an energy that because of the alignment of the sun, the star Sirius and the planet, it brings more light to the planet. And that light uh, manifests through the downloads of all these magical codes that makes us act and be and feel and think and say much more different things than we used to. Because there is, whether we know it or not, there is a cosmic energy that supports everything that we do, everything that we feel. And this alignment comes also with the alignment of ourselves. Because we believe that today, because of social media, there is this concept of being an influencer. And it's been, it's been taken into a completely different direction. The, the word influence, the in part, it's the inside. And fluence, it comes from the Latin uh, uh, fluir, which means flow. So it's how you flow inside that makes you act, like my brother said, think, say, and do what you do, what you say, what you think, right? And if you believe it so much, that's how you get to influence people. It's not by, it's not by telling people what to do or, or having a big Instagram account what influence in people is the, the fact that you believe so much that you can influence others by what you have, uh, the way you look, that it's actually, these people believe it so much that are also reflecting that in, in the people that starts following them. So we are creating this wrong impression of what an influencer is. So this is a time that we become the influence we want to see in the world, but that influence has to come from within, from from the inside so we can start influencing ourselves first because it's an inner work it has nothing to do with you uh, having a uh, control of, of, the, of what's going on outside is how you flow inside within that allows you to see the change in the outside so today that's what we are through the meditations that will be with Livia uh, guiding and and I say guiding because uh, as we spoke uh, before with Livia, this is not uh, a time for, for us to give you anything. It's a time for you to give yourselves what you want, what you desire, because it's your work, it's your journey. And we're so used to right now with technology that things get done for us without us making any effort, like ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, so tonight, uh, this evening, or this morning, wherever you are watching, the invitation is for you to take uh, charge of your own activation, of your own uh, initiation, of giving you all the gifts that you deserve, that you want, that you believe you don't have, or, or, or owning that future self and bringing it to the now and say, I am, I am. I love Marco so much and I love your wisdom and the groundiness of it. I love how grounded I feel right now by listening to you and bringing this, you know, wisdom that 
is so simple and so embodied. And I love the work that you are doing in, in the embodiment and self-empowerment. And I would love for you guys to speak a little bit more about, you know, self-empowerment and what does that mean? And, you know, um, to speak about the original blueprint, because this is our, you know, the essence and the code of our um, transmission today and how we can ground these concepts more in physical reality in a way that we can apply it immediately. Absolutely. We love the practicality of things. And even though uh, going back to your original blueprint sounds fancy, it's not. The original pain comes about when we act and say and do things that don't resonate with us, with our true essence. So the moment we start pleasing others and you know, uh, acting uh, in, demanding way, in demanding ways that society asks us to, in any way, is when we start uh, developing these pains, this suffering, because we're not being true to who we are. We start being conditioned. You have to act this way. You have to speak this way. You have to actually dress this way. So the society, through social media, through music, through TV, they start to try to shape us. So the moment we break from that pattern, that that, yeah, and, and become true to who we are, loving beings, compassionate, we're all the same being. We're all one. We're all this super loving being, right? So... <laughs> The moment we come back to our true essence and stop pleasing everyone. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, challenges we go through life because at work, you know, you want to uh, please your boss, you want to please your coworkers, you want to please your friends, you want to please your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your children. You, you become a pleaser just so you can fit in, just so you can be accepted, just so you can be loved, just so you can be validated. So the moment you break from that conditioning, then you come back to your original blueprint, to your true essence. Is since we're not practicing that, that our soul hurts. And we start developing, like you said earlier, all these diseases, that dis dissonance that doesn't resonate with who we are. That's why the name disease because there is a dissonance in our soul. And we don't, you know, we don't tune in with what we're doing anymore because it is, it's not what we really want to do. It's not re what we really want to say. It's not how we really want to feel. But in order to even fit in in our own families, sometimes we have to comply. Sometimes, sometimes we have to abide by it, abide by it. So what's important is to really know where we are. First of all, in our nucleus, family nucleus, children and husband, wife, and say, where am I in my own family? If you're having problems, of course. If you're not, then you're fine in that department. But if you feel that there is disharmony at home, then you need to start asking questions to yourself. Where am I not being true to myself, where I am not acting from a place of my original blueprint, if we're going to stick to that title hearts there's something that comes to my heart when i hear all this and it is before enlightenment chop wood and carry water after enlightenment chop wood and carry water all these activations all these downloads that we're receiving that we receive through your beautiful um, meditation they don't exempt us from the mundane daily day things that we have to do. What sets the different apart is the attitude. We do the dishes, we clean the house, you know, we do from the most mundane things all the way to taking new risks and new adventures, and we explore the world differently. So it's all about the attitude that we take, if we are smiling or not, you know, something beautiful that we practice all the time is we have a mantra and you guys can write it down <laughs> and we say I now let spirit guide so what that does is 
it let us melt instantly in milliseconds with our higher self. So if I'm gonna do the dishes, I have two options, do it from my lower self, which is not bad, it's just my lower self, which is me, or do it from my higher self, which is also me. But there is a different attitude when I do it and I invite my higher self to do the, the dishes with me <laughs> than when I don't. It just feels like a heavier task when I don't invite my higher self for some reason. When I do yoga, when I work out, when I write, I do invite always my higher self, my highest self, the highest expression of me, which is still me, to do the task, the writing, the exercise, the running, even the running with me. And I believe that that's one of the, the easiest way uh, for navigating through our darkest moments, you know? And since our higher self is, a, is, a, is us of, of light, then it's like when you are going through a cavern, you know, like in the darkest uh, black, uh, mo darkest moments of your life, as long as there is light within you and you call upon your light, it will illuminate the path with you. And it won't feel so scary. You won't feel so lonely. And now remember all these up and downs, all these, is a two dimensional representation of this. This is the, the, third, the three dimensional representation of this spiral ascension. But the downs are necessary because that's where we learn. The ups is where we integrate. So if we change the perspective of what the darkest moments are, which are lessons to be learned, then all of the sudden we pay more attention and we change the connotation of what we're going through. And we say, it's time to learn. And now this is a, be a beautiful practice that, you know, that we have done for a long time, for many, 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 many years. In order for us to never experience or to hardly experience any dark moments in our lives, we must create our own challenges in life. Because if we don't, then subconsciously and unconsciously, we create them. So we might as well create them. Imagine uh, when we are running, and then all of a sudden, you know, we finish and okay, that's fine. We did exercise, we burned some calories, but now we want the challenge. So what, would, what do we do? We put hurdles. So we can run and jump, run and jump, jump. And as we jump, our muscles expand and we become stronger and we become more agile. So it's important for us to, to, to create those challenges because it's, that's, that's for us to grow. And they're important. So if we don't want life to create, or, or, or us, because it's really, it's always us, uh, to create those challenges unconsciously or subconsciously, we most create them in consciousness. And that means, let's say, learning a new language, going on a trip to a country you have never been, learning how to dance, anything that you can uh, think of as long as you haven't done it, that represents a challenge, you can still make it fun and it counts because it's something that is making you expand and grow and learn. So as long as we set those challenges consciously in our lives, we will never, and this I promise you, we will never experience a challenge that, is, that we didn't call upon uh, consciously, if that makes sense. That it's a very, basic concept but sometimes we have for well, no we never forget we never forget uh, sometimes we just get distracted from the concept and starting from the word remembrance or or, re, or what is to remember uh, the the re part is to reunite and the member like it says to reunite to bring together the members the organs the attributes what attributes are those? Is this network, this infinite network that allows us to remember, to bring together everything into one uh, single being, which is you, which is us. And if we can fathom that we are already everything that we want to experience, because see, a lot of, a lot of times we have this intention of getting the job, the home, the relationship, the whatever we want, it's not, that, it's not that we want that, it's we want that 
uh, the feeling that getting those things are gonna give to us, right? But if we remember that we already are that joy, that happiness, that comfort, that support, that unconditional love, all these things, then we stop seeking outside. And then we stop, we start to become, we start becoming our true self. Because we've been lied uh, from the moment we were born and we've been put into a little box of saying, this is who you are. This is your name. This is your religion. This is the soccer team you should root for. And uh, the political party you will grow into. So if we, for a moment, and this is a good moment, start detaching from all this conditioning that we have created about, about ourselves, whether it has been put into our uh, awareness or we brought it into our own existence just to, to learn the challenge of expansion today, right now, not tomorrow, not in 10 minutes, right now, right this second, we can start detaching, we can detach by simply having the intention to do it, by remembering who you are. Because who you are is beyond what we imagine or what we can explain or put into words. You just have to really not even close your eyes. You just have to know, you just have to know it. And you have to have the certainty that you are everything that you want to experience already because we have these goals in life and we have these uh, vision boards and all these dreams about, who, and, and we start fantasizing who we want to become but if we just know that we are. And, I, and that's why I say that remembering this might be such a simple, uh, thing, but it's also one of the hardest things we go through while in life, because when we come here, we decide we choose to forget. So if we take this lion's gate energy and the intention is to simply remember, remember, remember who you are <laughs> and, and all the beauty that you hold, regardless of what you've been told, you are too tall, too short, too overweight, too skinny. You have an accent when you speak English. You have, there is something wrong with you. If we put that aside and, and start practicing in our heads who we want to, uh, who are we representing? Are we representing those lies? Or are we representing our true essence, which is creation? And when you and, and when we say, um, but what, what am I gonna create? What do you wanna create? You are creation itself. So create this moment right now. You can start creating who you want, who you are by remembering. And the reason why Livia put this together and brought all these downloads, and 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 maybe, just maybe. The reason why we're here telling you this is just so you can simply remember this concept of you are, you are, you are. And who are, and like in the, uh, even in, in some books, it says, I am that I am. Well, you are, and you are whomever you choose to be. And we will never be victims if we remember this. When we started this path, there was this uh, energy, there were these energies in the mountain uh, that after a meditation show up into our awareness and, and reminded us of two simple concepts. And they said, because when we were presented with this opportunity to, to be of service, uh, we said, well, how are we going to do this? We have, no, we have, we're, we have nothing. We, we have no recollection of what, what you're asking us to do. And they said, as long as you remember two things, it is all within you and there is no wrong way to do it. And that got imprinted in our, in, in our cellular structure and the knowing that it, it is all within you. And that no matter what you choose to do to express yourself, your truth, there is no wrong way to do it. You just have to believe it. You just have to be honest. You just have to be integral. 
you just have to be truthful to that. And if you are, then you are fulfilling your mission because a lot of people are, are asking, so how do I fulfill my mission? How do I know my mission? And we have all these questions about a purpose. And we seem to, to live in these in this shadows sometimes. And let me add a little bit to what our purpose and our mission are, because you know there is a purpose and there's a mission. And our mission, our purpose, I'm gonna start with the purpose. Our purpose is to be happy. And that's for everyone. We all have the same purpose, to be happy. Our mission, however, it is to find a unique way to be happy. You wanna become a dancer, a musician, a mathematician, it doesn't matter, a scientist. It doesn't light matter. worker. Light worker, it doesn't <laughs> matter. We all have a unique way to get there. Now, what speeds up that happiness? Well, a smile helps a lot, the way you smile. And as someone asked earlier, is it a technology? So we can raise our frequency right away. Yes, smile. Smiling is the fastest way and the, and, and the best technology there is in the universe to expedite and bring forth and manifest anything that you want in life. Look at uh, Livia smiling. <laughs> that's the that's type of smile that says, you know what? I am present. And that brings forth all the, all the magic, all the downloads, all the transmissions because of her ability to smile that big. So our capacity to manifest into this reality, what we wanna see manifested is, are we having fun with it? Are we enjoying the process? And guess what? As long as you're here listening to this, you're ready to, to listen to this. You are the process. There is no process outside of you. There has never been a process outside of you. You are the process. But sometimes we wanna trust the process because it means I can trust something that is not me because I am not to be trusted. So let me trust something else. And no, <laughs> you are the process. And you can go as fast or as slow as you want because where are you going so fast anyway? But you can go fast or you can go, it doesn't matter. We have an eternity to get there and it's okay. And if you don't do it in this life, well, guess what? We have another one to try. Hopefully, you know, we don't repeat <laughs> the same experience, which is the whole point. But yes, as long as we are enjoying ourselves, meaning enjoying the process and having fun with it. So today is a good, a good day to get rid of that relationship that you don't wanna be in anymore. To quit that job that, you, that makes you miserable from you know, whatever, nine to five, if you have it. And, and no, no, there's nothing wrong with that, but maybe you can find another one. And sometimes taking those big ch uh, chances in life is what also brings forth other opportunities. You have to empty yourself before you get filled with something else, with more blessings, because there's all, all these blessings available. But sometimes we're just, just too full with and all beliefs, with all conditionings, with all habits. So I think Lion's Gate is a perfect invitation. And, you know, like my brother said, they remember who you are, the very uh, Lion King's like, see, he's a lion that said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we think that, right? It's just wisdom. And for Lion's Gate, it applies very well. Go ahead. Oh no, I, and I just wanted to, uh, a, a little bit to what he's saying, just so, so we can move uh, on with the, um, the, the next part. So uh, when, we, when we're looking for, he said something about the blessings. To let the blessings come in, we must empty ourselves so new blessings can come in. And yes, and also a faster way to empty yourself is to realize that you are the blessing. Because sometimes we're looking for support. Sometimes we're looking for uh, clarity. Sometimes, whatever we're looking for, once we are able to be the support and the clarity and the blessing or the gift or the miracle to someone else, you no longer need miracles in life. You no longer need blessings in your life. You no longer, because you are the blessing to someone. You are the miracle to someone. You are the love, the support, the guidance to someone. And believe me, there is always someone that needs your support, your guidance, your blessings, your gifts, because, <laughs> because you have them, because you are them. So if we choose today to stop looking and to start becoming, 
And if you can just take that out of everything that we just said, stop looking, start becoming. The search stops. And then we become present. We stop living in the future. What, what is the future gonna bring? Or we start, when we stop living in the past, I cannot believe they did this to me. I'm such a victim. And then we see all these, all these uh, uh, things that have happened as, as, as part of our strength, part of what makes us the person that we have become. So that's how we uh, make it easier for us. We stop, we change our perception and say, everything that has happened to me, my, my ancestors, uh, my bad relationships, my bad jobs, all that adds up to my strength and it stops being heavy on us and it becomes our strength and it makes us walk lighter, become the path, or a soft path, full of me being what, what, what I want instead of walking a path, searching for these things, believing that they come from some source outside of us, whether it's the universe or someone, because it's also too easy to ask the universe. God, Jesus, Buddha, Mohammed, whatever, Krishna, whatever we believe on. So in, during the next few minutes, oh, and just to, to finish, to just thank you. Uh, there's a question that you can post to yourself from a place of honesty and that will make you move forward in your life. And the question is, when does my point of reality start? When does my point of reality start? Well, it starts now, right? So that means it doesn't matter what happened yesterday, not even this morning, let alone 10 years ago or 20 years ago. It doesn't matter. Your point of reality starts now, always. So you can completely disregard what has happened, completely disregard who you believe, who you are, and start now. A whole, not new chapter, a whole new book, a whole new character with whole new habits. And that's the beauty of the now, of this present moment. It offers you infinite possibilities to whatever you wanna become because your point of reality starts now. But today, there are two things that we do to bring us back to our essence. And it only takes 30 seconds at night and when we wake up. Before I go to sleep, before we go to sleep, put a big smile on my face. Sometimes I even make myself laugh. <laughs> you know, I actually laugh <laughs> about uh, all this joke. It's a big joke, <laughs> but it's a beautiful game. So all I can do is laugh, but not like I'm making fun, no, no. I just laugh as in, I just wanna feel good. And then I say, thank you. And that's the, my last action is to, to smile, to laugh. And my last word is thank you. Same way in the morning, I open my eyes, I smile. I, I laugh if I must, and then I say thank you. And then you can go through your, it just, you know, little things that you can implement in your life will make that difference, will bring you back to that essence. And so, but sometimes we believe that we have to go through all these hurdles to become, to be happy, to, to feel good. And we no, we can just make it a habit to be grateful. That's all we need to do to, be, to, to live a life in gratitude. Which by the way, we have this concept of being grateful is at night to also, I mean, yes, granted it is what, what he's saying, but also, okay, I'm grateful for my family and make a list, right? We just wanna make a list. Okay, I'm grateful for my family, for my friends, for my food, for my car. And we go through, through this, this, okay, I, I was just grateful. And, and then you just, no, I mean, yes, it's an aspect of it, but true gratitude is when you are going through these dark moments, and you're still able to say thank you because you recognize that these moments are serving you or they're trying to serve you and to teach you something so you can expand emotionally, mentally. So like I mentioned again, when we change our perception and, and we really start practicing gratitude every time, not just through 
good moments and holidays and Christmas. No, no. Also, when you believe or perceive a situation that is a misfortune or even an illness, we must practice gratitude. That's actually when we most, uh, we have to practice gratitude the most. And the next level of that is <laughs> when you wake up, you ask yourself the question, how can I, how can someone be grateful for me today? What can I do for one person to be grateful for me? And, so that's, seems, yeah. and that's when gratitude gets taken to the, to, to the highest level because it's the highest energy on earth. And, and it, it just does, and then, and then you're living, you're living in your true essence because we want to be grateful about the universe, about the, all the gifts, the blessings, but then you become gratitude itse itself. Now that's, that's living in your blueprint. That's living in your fullest essence. When, when you uh, become a reason for someone to be grateful and, and that's, and that's, so that's a question we can ask ourselves. Is my family grateful for me? Are my friends grateful for me? Are animals grateful for me? Is the planet grateful for me? We know the answer. That's where gratitude really gets taken to a whole new level, you know, and, and we start practicing mindfulness, consciousness, to make sure that no matter where we go, you know, we contribute to this planet to, to be a better place, no matter where we go. You know, to, to contribute with someone else's experience while they are here sharing space, time and space with us. And, and I'm sure everyone wants to hear about the Arturians, about the Pleiadians, about the Syrians. They're beautiful beings. They are. They're beautiful energies. They're a beautiful consciousness. And if we were ever able to connect to them, to any of these energies, was through gratitude. And... The, the, the one time that we connected to especially the Pleiadians the most was through gratitude, to just being grateful and being uh, uh, the reason someone else was grateful about. And that moment, they became so present that we saw them physically. And they reminded us of this because they, they communicate telepathically. And we say, why are we seeing you? And they said, because you, you were uh, in a state of gratitude. And gratitude is the highest uh, resonance on planet Earth. And that's the resonance uh, we live in, or you know, we resonate. Uh, so with that reminder, we made everything around being grateful and trying for someone to become grateful for us. And it's so simple. And it's so simple, so, so simple because um, it takes practice. It only takes practice. You don't need to be the highest Reiki master, the, the, high, the most open channel. You can just be truthful to that truth and say, I'm grateful. And how can I make someone be grateful for me? You know, this, this path that we consciously walk doesn't guarantee you that you will never ever be sad or stressed or frustrated or even mad or furious. What does guarantee is the time you spend dwelling in that emotion. That's the promise. Because it wouldn't be even human to say, oh, I, I, I'm never sad. I, I, am, I am never stressed. I am never, no. But how much time do I allow myself to dwell in that emotion? Well, that's up to me. It used to be days, it used to be weeks, Man, I think one time I, I spent 10 years dwelling in something that it wasn't worth it. Now it's 10 minutes. Honestly, it's more like five. But if I really, really want to dwell there, I allow myself 10 minutes. And then I just, you know, start doing things that make me happy. Like I smile. I start smiling. And I promise, through smiling, you can make any ordinary moment into an extraordinary moment. It doesn't matter where you are. Don't try it in a funeral, but you know, if you are anywhere else, you know, oh, well, 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 even in a funeral, sure, why not? Uh, the energy. You know, it changes the energy. It brings a different uh, frequency. But, but yes, we do connect 
with every emotion. We have 108 emotions on planet Earth. We're so rich in emotions. There are some beings on, uh, in the universe that they only have three emotions or one or one. There are, there are actually uh, beings in the universe with zero emotions. That's why they come and try to learn from us, which we are royalty. So, so yes, to answer your question, yes, of course, we still, we still connect to those things. It's just how much time we allow. I love this so much, Miguel and Marco, and I would love to invite now the group to uh, place questions for the beautiful brothers that we have here. So if you have any questions for um, Marco and Miguel, please share it in the chat group. And I love the wisdom. And also, I know that you guys are very connected with all the higher realms of existence and advanced civilizations of light. Like we definitely, when we connected, the Acturian Council was present and you guys were channeling information from the Acturians and it was so amazing. But I also, you know, appreciate um, like how grounded in physical reality you are and how you are, you know, you are able to actually move through time and space and connect to different people and communities and, you know, embody the wholeness and, and the multidimensionality and who you are in physical form. And I love this so much because my journey was very much like ascension, de descension, and, you know, going in the physical body. And this is when I was able actually to meet you and connect with you because before I was not even able to, you know, I was only staying in one dimension, into one reality, and I didn't want to leave that space. So I love how embodied your teachings are and, you know, how much magic you are creating with the groups that you are impacting and the lucky ones that are going to be with you in Mount Shasta on the 8-8 portal, you know? I wanted to be there as well, but... <laughs> you, will, you, you will be there in, yeah. You are already there with us. Yes, because we are there sure. already. <laughs> yes. <Something laughs> that I would My like consciousness to... would be there as well. <laughs> of course, of course. And, you know, it's, um, when we started this part with the Arturians, and they started downloading all this information through uh, telepathic thoughts, that all of a sudden it expanded in our minds. I was so overwhelmed. I mean, I understood what they were trying to say, but I was like, whoa, that's great. But how do we bring into practicality this information and on this plane so it can be applied in daily basis effortlessly? Because universal wisdom, it, it, it can be very complex. And it's, and it's a lot and it's overwhelming. It, it can be overwhelming. So our work with the Arturians was to really translate, digest, and, and really uh, bring this information down and make it simple. That's, that's really one of uh, our biggest missions to, to be able to offer a different perspective from a very simple way that can be applied right away whether it's with mudras, with mantras, with simple exercises. All this is technology. All these are downloads. And the most magical downloads that we, that we have received today will be manifested from this moment moving forward into practicality. How do I become a more practical individual and navigate my life from a place of consciousness effortlessly? with ease and grace that's all with i love ease. this and also someone asked here like in relation to our physical body um like what is the diet so someone is asking is do, like should we um there is someone asking let me see where is was that uh, are you okay with eating meat so it's not like we are if we are okay or we're not okay we just simply don't do it because we believe that when you eat meat well it's already a uh, food that is dead that carries death and it's very dense and it comes with a lot of energy that might be of suffering of pain but it has nothing to do with our oh, man pro no no but i mean that's a different subject but it's i know of the dense we know of the density that that carries and to put it inside me, to put something that is that has no life in me, uh, I have a little bit of a. Uh, it's not. It's not even an issue. I just rather not. You know, the Arturians 
will give you a definition of that. The, Ple the Pleiadians will give you a different definition of that. What the Pleiadians would say is, if you feel like eating meat, then do. Just don't feel bad about it. You know, because it's worse to stay with the like, oh, I want, I really want to eat meat, but well, let me eat a piece of lettuce. And then you feel like you really wanted the meat. Well, then just, just eat the meat and bless it and talk to it and say, you know, you are going to serve me as food, you know, and it's, and, and it's going to be great. And that's it. Now, the Arturians, however, will have a different uh, answer for that because they don't compromise what they put in their bodies. But it's a different consciousness. Which one is right? They're both uh, for you to discern. It's, it's your choice. It's different consciousness have different points of views on what they in, in, ingest. So, yeah. I love it's, this. It's not good or bad. Nothing, nothing is good or bad. Yeah, it's a choice. Is also, you know, is also connected to our all with our body blueprint, you know, and um, yeah, it's how our body blueprint connect consciousness and embody consciousness, right? So it's it's a it's a very much an individual choice, um, in the end. Yeah, there are different questions. Um, I would love to answer that one day. Uh, what's the best way to connect with the Arturians? Mm -hmm. If that's okay, so. Connection, it's, it's a key word for us because before we connected to the Arturians or any celestial being, my brother and I have to do a lot of work, like connection work between him and I. And we have to actually get in good terms, loving terms, compassionate terms before we connected with any other being outside of us. Because a lot of people I know, they just want to connect with the aliens and the Arturians and the Pleiadians and the Syrians and the Orions. But how are you connecting with your family, with your, with your mom, with your dad, with your children? Because if you cannot connect at that level in, in your harmony. family nucleus, in harmony, in, in, loving, in loving ways, it's going to be really hard. Actually, I'm just gonna say it. It won't happen. <laughs> you can't connect with Arturians when you have all these fa all these problems everywhere, and you have problems connecting to your own. At family. this level, at this level, we must learn how to, you know, to connect at a three-dimensional level first with our family, with our friends, with our coworkers, with society. When when you are driving, how you how do you connect at this level? Then. We can definitely aspire to connect with higher beings because higher it takes frequency. practice. It's like going to school. You know, because you, when you, you are when you're able to connect to, to your most direct family and you're having communication issues and there's interference between the communication with your own family, with your own mother, with your own father, with your significant other. And so you start vibrating very low. The Arturians don't lower the, their vibration to connect to you. You must rise your frequency to connect to the Arturians because uh, the, the connection doesn't happen at a mental level. The connection happens at, at a frequency level. So if you want to connect to the Arturians or any uh, higher uh, frequency being or energy, you must vibrate at that frequency. And, and once you are rising your frequency, some beings, some beings will meet you there. The, uh, the, um, the Lyrians will, the Pleiadians will, the Arturians, you have to rise above uh, yourself. And, and, and not because they are, oh, they, I feel like are better. No, no, they just vibrate uh, a lot higher than certain, like the Pleiadians are the closest ones to earth. That's why you can sometimes even see Pleiadians physically because they can densify themselves and be seen. The Arturians couldn't densify themselves because they vibrate really, really high. So for them to materialize it themselves on, on Earth, they just get depleted. And they do have machinery for that to, to recharge themselves. And, and, and we, but we, also, we actually do too. And uh, it's just not as advanced as theirs, but it works. Our technology works as well. 
when you see your manifestation uh, process to be slow, then you know you're, you're vibrating slow. When you are thinking, I want this, and then you're manifesting really fast, then you know you're vibrating high. So your level of manifestation, how quick or how slow you are manifesting, that's your technology. That will tell you if you're vibrating high or low. But that's only our experience with connecting to the Arturians. That's beautiful. I love it. And I love the explanation of different star races and how that, you know, connects to the planet Earth, um, which actually take me to another question as your work is very much in, um, you know, allowing, empowering uh, the groups of people that you are working to actually find that essence within themselves and the transformation to come from inside out, right? You are facilitating their incredible transformation. Um, what are the tools that someone can apply every day to increase awareness and to start that journey of connecting to their essence? You know, what will be the first steps for people to go in within um, and practically start taking action? Yeah. To just answer, take action. It's divine action. Yeah. That's the word that comes. It's called divine action. And when we want to have different results in our experience, we must become, and, and my brother did mention that earlier, we must become what we want to see manifested. Uh, a real example that I think I, I gave the other day uh, with my younger brother. I was meditating a few years back and, and I just felt that I needed to be su uh, supported. So of course, uh, this voice that always guides me, which is my higher self tells me, you know what to do. You need to become support for somebody else. So I got up and immediately, you know, I was like, who do I call? So I called my younger brother and I say, how are you? I didn't say, hey, listen, I, I'm, I'm becoming support to you. No, no, it's, how are you? A simple question. And he went on and on and on for an hour. He was going through a divorce. All these things were happening at the same time. So in the end, he actually said it. Thank you very much for calling me. I needed your support so much that it's crazy that you just called me. And he felt so much better. By, by the time we finished the conversation, I felt so empowered, self-empowered, because I took the time to call my younger brother and just to ask how he was. So that's the, probably the most practical application of becoming who you want to be. You need to be of service to somebody. And believe me, we have plenty, plenty of people we can be of service uh, at home, at work, uh, when we go out uh, at, in the elevator. So there is always an opportunity to rise above ourselves and, and do Are something. Are we willing to take? Yes. That's, you know, that's so the question. to answer in simple questions, I think that's the most practical way to transform someone's life and apply it immediately. Look for the opportunity to be of service. And even the intention of wanting to be of service will bring upon opportunities for you to, to serve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah you yeah, just have yeah. to have the intention. It's yeah, yeah, that yeah. easy. Uh, before we met you personally or we talked to you, I was meditating like literally about uh, like the day before maybe. And I was like, how can I reach more people? Because we don't really have this following. It's like, how can I, move? you know, we just work in like one by one. like, And then all of a sudden there you were, oh, can we do this? Uh, or, you know, like online thing. I was like, Hello. I just had the intention to reach more people. And there you were. You know, you have this, this portal, this uh, collective uh, that we were able to participate and just share just a little bit of what we love to share. And instead tell, of doing it one by one, we, there were. I tell you a mantra that saved my life. Uh, meditating, I, I ask, okay, well, you know, it's so easy to be distracted. Uh, you know, how, how can I be sure that if I'm, I'm ever in doubt, you know, how can I come out, you know? And this voice, of course, it's always a deep voice, you know, very deep. He said, and it's a male's voice for some reason. He said, when in doubt, be of service. It's like, wow, yes. So every time I feel doubt, down then, or down or sad or, or stress sad. or when there is doubt in my heart 
the only clarity that comes clear to me is when in doubt, be of service. And I find, I go out there. I, I, you don't even have to like literally physically go out there. You can just call somebody or text somebody or, you know, and be of service. And that alone will change your frequency. You will rise your frequency, will transform who you are and shift you into higher realms of existence. Just being of service or your blueprint, your blueprint. Yeah.